<clears throat> okay, thanks guys, thanks John. Um, if you haven't registered for the event tomorrow, really, if you're serious about APIs, go there. Um, if I look around the room, I see familiar faces, and I know that you're probably not gonna be the typical audience. Uh, if I look at the 600 people who are probably coming, uh, many of you are presenting as well. So uh, thanks, John, for the opportunity to really just uh, rehearse some of my slides. Um, many of you will know that uh, we all kind of do them the night before. I actually finished them <laughs> last week, so I'm quite, quite happy. Um, it's going to be a busy week for us, right? So Axway has three sessions. My dear friend Emmeline is here as well. She's going to speak tomorrow. We have a technical hands-on session. I think we are still able to have folks joining us where you get to know some of the bits hands-on as well. Um, Yes, my, my talk's going to be about open banking, but really, I'm a geek. I'm a developer, right? And, and uh, I wanted to look at this from, from that perspective. Um, so I haven't rehearsed this much. My idea really is to say, let's, 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 we are among friends. Let me show you the slides that I've prepared and what I had in mind in uh, presenting it to the audience. Um, so yes, I'm a developer advocate. I work for Axway, um, based in Singapore traveling a lot, find me on LinkedIn, stalk me on LinkedIn, uh, I will welcome that. Uh, my slides, and including this one, I haven't put them up yet, but I make it a habit before I start a presentation, my slides are in my GitHub repository. Am I standing in the way? It's probably better from here. Right, so if we talk about social media, right, there's other platforms as well, and as I get to travel, I'm also I'm a foodie, right? I'm, and I like I like seeing architecture. I like things. And so there is other other platforms that I use as well, besides LinkedIn, besides GitHub. Um, and obviously, I like to take photos, right? So at some point, since I'm a geek as well, I was curious. So we hear a lot about this AI stuff, machine learning these days, and it's always really high level. And and, and can we have some practical examples? And I was curious. So if a machine looks at my thousand plus photos, what would it see? And I said, yeah, let's take a lunch break and build this. And I'll show you the result before I show you how it's done. So to, I think to, if you showed me this 20 years ago and you talked to me about, so there is a machine, it looks at photos and it, it makes this because it's, this is not something I built. This is something a machine built. It's, this is science fiction. Today, People have an idea that machines can do this. Not sure about the how, but it, it is possible. All right, so how did I do this? Okay, I'm a, I'm a Python dude. Uh, I use APIs. And in this case, I used Microsoft Cognitive Services. I could have used probably IBM Watson or Google as well, but, but I chose this one. And it didn't take me more than a lunch break to build this using APIs, right? Um, this is where my clicker is dying. Cool, fantastic. <laughs> okay, here we go, right? I was going to give you the examples, right? Where, hello, I'm just going to click there myself, right? So, we all know, you go to Google, you search for pizza, and Google gives you 50 million images of pizza. This is the reverse version where you say, I, here's a photo, there is no EXIF, no metadata, anything. Here's just a photo. Tell me what you see. And the machine says, this is a close-up of a pizza. And I'm 92% confident. And here's a couple of tags. Right? And I do this for another photo. It says, oh, this is a cup of coffee. And right, I'm not really happy with this clicker. Um, a wooden table next to a window. 83%. A sunset over the ocean. So I mean. I have no idea how the machine does it, but it's, it's, it's spectacular, right? But yeah, um, a bunch of bananas? <laughs> no, right? But it's, it's only 37% confidence. So the, the only thing that I actually have done with the script is, you know, when you build that word cloud, just take the photos where you're 80% sure or more, right? Right, so I use this to, to set the scene, right? I'm an API guy. What is, what is this API stuff actually about, and why should we do it? Um, because that's what we want to talk about, right? Um, open banking, the evolution, the roadmap. What is this about? Developers who get thrown into this, 
what's kind of the, the history in, in a few minutes. What are, because I work a lot of with, with these people, what are the typical challenges and roadblocks that we see, and what do we need to build great APIs? And my point is, obviously I'm a foodie and the machine proved it, but I think my point is that it, today when you use APIs and when, when you have APIs that are designed the right way, it doesn't take you longer than a lunch break to build something like this, right? Because AI, cognitive services, is something really complex. There is days where I would like to understand how it works, but actually I'm, I'm really good enough if I just use the API, right? So it abstracts something really complicated, uh, and I don't care if this runs on a Raspberry Pi or on a mainframe. I just know how does the interface work, right? And my point is, if you have a great API, people will use the service more. So in, in this case, cognitive services from Microsoft, it gets a lot more sample data because people use it more. The product gets better, people use it more, right? So that's, that's, kind, of the, that's kind of the message. And uh, how do we apply this to uh, the big topic, right? Because ultimately, we want to talk about, oh, fantastic, can you please just... <laughs> yeah, okay, we want to talk about the two worlds, right? Open banking. Um, there is the theme that was introduced by the regulators, right, to, to, to the large banks, imposed, right? Um, and, and there is everything that we are looking at from the fintech and uh, the financial services uh, perspective to create new offerings and where you can do banking as a service, right, without, without having that uh, monster machine uh, behind you, right? Um, offer and consume financial services in a new way. Um, so, to me, the Big Bang uh, is in 2015 in the EU, right, where, where PS, PSD2 launched, right, the, the new way of doing things, where um, the, the regulator said, we'll, we'll allow um, specialized and licensed startups to access uh, your, your banking details on your behalf, uh, where, where you are able to uh, outsource that to a third party, and the banks are obligated to provide access, right? And what was the intention? To make things safer for the payments, to increase visibility, make things safer for the customer, and to have innovation, right? That, that was the overall theme. Um, and then uh, the, the guys in the UK said, yeah, that, that's awesome, but can we do a little more, right? Uh, and, and we want to talk about the individual phases, where, where we say payments is only the start, this is phase one. Right? And then we, we speak about what do I need? Right? I need to have access to accounts, which is the first phase. I need to uh, initiate the actual payment. And I want to find out has the payment actually happened and what, what is the history behind this. So this is, this is one is uh, talking about this part. Uh, and then this gets adopted worldwide where the individual countries have their own interpretation, their own approach of... of um, looking at open banking. Um, the way we have it here in Singapore is, is different from the way in Australia. The guys in Hong Kong felt, you know what, let's just do it the way uh, um, the guys in the UK have done it. Right? So there is multiple renditions of those. Because, uh, who knows this guy? Okay. Maurice Moss from the IT crowd. Right? Um, because what, what does it have to do with developers? Those are really special people. Marketing works very different if you're a developer, right? They can instantly verify stuff. They are very resistant to fluff as well, right? So how do you make it relevant for them? And because I get asked, so I'm, I'm bank number X, I'm bank number uh, Z. How do I attract developers to work for me? What sort of environment do I have to create to, to make it acceptable? What sort of things are they interested in doing? And um, I'll take DBS as an example, right? It's, it's a, a very um, visual bank over here in, in this part of the world. And when you go to uh, the API portal, which is open to everyone, you can uh, sign up, register, and have sandbox ac access to 200 APIs, where you learn about how APIs work in general. And DBS can go to uh, the national university and run a hackathon 
It's like you, will, you have no background about how our systems work. You actually don't need it, right? The only thing that you need is, is the API, right? Uh, the service catalog. Because my, my theme is how, do I can, how can I build a Hello World program in five minutes, right? If you have somebody who joins your department and they take six months to figure out how your system works, how can I, how can I onboard a partner in, in a few days? How can I open my silo database to a different business unit, right? Or how can I enable someone from the community to leverage my systems to innovate new stuff? That should be the theme. Um, the challenges that we see are, uh, well, very much about the interface design, the documentation. People will say, yes, we have APIs. And I spend a whole day with someone just to figure out how the API actually works. They have to call someone. There is an outdated Word document. The Word document might be up to, up to date, but there is 17 parameters in it, and I have no idea what they do, where they come from, right? Um, which has a direct impact to security, right? If I want to make the API secure, it's got to be in the documentation. It's got to be in the Swagger document. Otherwise, uh, a proper API management solution will block it, right? Um, I'm not very religious about the cloud, right? You can use the cloud. You don't have to use the cloud. But it sets the expectation. If I'm a developer, I want access to a resource in, it doesn't have to be five minutes. Give me five hours. That's good enough. But I certainly don't want to wait five weeks, and then it still doesn't work. Right? So how do I get access to resources? Quick prototyping. How can I, how can I quickly see something? How can I, you know, we have all these talks about Elastic and Kafka and Kubernetes. This is all science fiction, right? Because we want to start something today. We don't want to set up a massive infrastructure just to get going, just to experiment, right? Uh, and uh, plausible mock data, right? Semantic experience, where it's not just lorem ipsum and ABC123. There is many others, but I think I'll focus on, on just a few. Design first, right? Again, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is an experienced audience uh, today, but I never, never uh, stop highlighting that we really, as much as I'm a geek, as much as I love coding, we got to stop that and say, let's look at the contract first. What does the API do? What's the data model? How do I authenticate? Maybe what's, what's the license, right? And then there is Stoplight, there is Swagger, there is Postman, right, which should be part of the initial steps before you code. And even when you code, you're like, do I really have to code? Or are, are there tools available that do the work for me? Because ultimately, and I mentioned that in several discussions before the meetup, if we, if we do this the right way, right, what we are consuming, what, what Uli is consuming in his lunch break to build, to build that Instagram bot, right? I want to go to an API portal. I want to sign up for a key. I want to uh, download a Swagger definition. I want to get API keys. Maybe there is OAuth in the picture. It's all about a JSON HTTP based messaging. That's all I care about, right? And we have all these complex backends in the backend. And it's, it's a great new world where all individual developers and teams can choose the tool that they like. But we need to have that managing infrastructure in the middle that I compare it to a, it's a, it's a mix of a bodyguard and a translator, right? Got to see your ticket, otherwise you can't access my API. Oh, you speak SOAP, the API does JSON. Let me, let me translate that for you, right? Um, sure, I'm sure this is a, something that you're all familiar with. Um, I've personally started a project, an open source project uh, in 2017, which gives you open banking related Docker containers. I've also put some of them live in a, in a live environment, which you can consume, right? So this is an ATM locator, this is payments, this is currency conversion, um, um, account management, right? Uh, like seven, eight containers. And you can run them on OpenShift, you can run them on your Mac, you can run them on Kubernetes, you can run them on Windows, basically every environment that gives you Docker. And you'll have immediately, uh, in an offline fashion, if you like, available uh, containers that produce reasonable data in an, in an open banking environment. Another method to get you started quite quickly. And yeah, that's, that's basically my talk, right? Where I try to 
imagine that there is pro probably several folks in the audience who say, how do I get started? How, how can I have some quick wins? What should I do? And I don't want to do a thank you slide. I say, guys, use Postman, use Stoplight, use Swagger, if you are not already doing that. Um, check, out, check out my stuff on, on GitHub, follow me on LinkedIn. There is material that you can use for free. And join meetups like, like the a API Craft because it's all about how we share uh, and, and help each other. Thanks.